So again, thank you very much for inviting me. And I just uh, I was just uh, present at uh, the last part of the, the previous speaker before the break. And uh, I was really uh, impressed. Uh, and this is exactly say what open science is all about. And uh, you will hear me talk about open science as the, the main goal for open science is to connect with society. This is my main goal. But to do that properly, we have to rethink recognition and rewards. That's my talk. My talk will focus in the end that how can we change recognition and rewards so that people are being rewarded for doing what the previous speaker has been discussing and what I will also discuss in my talk. Uh, and again, indeed, uh, for those who are most, most interested in open science and all these aspects, also public engagement, relations with society, uh, my book uh, can be downloaded per chapter for free uh, and it's heavily recommended. Um, I want to go to the next slide. Of course, open science is, this is of course for you an open door. This is, everybody knows this already. The aim is to increase the quality, progress, scientific and societal impact of research and scholarship. And uh, in, uh, in my book, I describe that this is not uh, trivial. This is really something that we have to work on very hard. And I will explain uh, why that is. Um, uh, to achieve, say, uh, the goals of open science, we have to engage. And this is also what in the previous talk, uh, say, already was an extremely, say, uh, wonderful and, and very, uh, say, powerful uh, uh, example, I'm engage. So when appropriate, and engage with the representative stakeholders from society. So I've been doing HIV AIDS research for a long time. We were talking with the, the gay men, homosexual men in Amsterdam. What are your needs? How, how, uh, what are your practices? How do you live? How can we understand how the virus spreads? We had to discuss with these say stakeholders in society, what type of research we should do. We didn't do it in the beginning, but we learned from doing this um, and by, by discussing with these people over the say between 80, 1983 and, and, and the rest of my, of, my, of my life, more or less. And so in and, and this way, you define problems. What the previous speakers also said, and this is how you define your problem. You're, 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 together with stakeholders, you try to figure out what should be discussed, investigated and how can we discuss this in a proper way. And of, of course, act in the end, of course, actively promote that results of any kind are provided, but also uh, you help implementation and you also evaluate implementation. So this is all science in action. So you, 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 produce, uh, you produce scientific res results, knowledge, you could say knowledge claims, and this is done in the context and you try to put those say, knowledge claims again in the context of society to see whether it really works and, and how it can be improved. This is also explained in my book. This is very much American pragmatism, but it's for, the, uh, for other people to know. I, and then, of course, to achieve this, to, to go to this, uh, this level of open science, uh, sharing results, uh, uh, sharing results is, is not trivial. This is something that has to be done all of the time. Not, on that, not what was previously said by the previous speakers, not in the end. No, you start with immediately if science is being done in a co-creation process. So this sharing results is something that is going on all of the time, not, not only at the end. And of course, if possible, also share fair data and code. And also during the, the course, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, you have to be careful and, and, and you have to think whether something can be uh, uh, shared, but this is of course the, in the end. And then last but not least, again, what I said before, people should be uh, incentivized and rewarded for doing this type of activity, for sharing your data, that takes time, for making your data fair, that takes time and money, and sharing your code, that takes time and, and, and money. And so you should be, that should be also incentivized and rewarded. In Europe, uh, again, I have to give a lot of uh, say credit to Europe because in Europe since 2015, Carlos Meudas, but really since 2016, um, open science has been on the agenda. And for there is still a lot of discussion going on also in my country. Uh, why are we doing open science? Why are we changing the incentive and reward system? Well, this is because in the Europe, European community, we have decided together that open science is the way to do science in Europe. And this is not only in Europe, this is also in, in Latin America, in, 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 in Africa, in, in also in Australia and other, other countries, uh, United Kingdom, of course, there's a lot of, of activity going on. And I will share with that on, the, on my, one of my last slides. And you can see also on the bottom, there's this link to the, uh, the open science policy platform that has been active since 2016. And you see here, the, this is the agenda. This is the complete agenda of, of course, to my, um, yeah, what I don't like a lot is that citizen science and public engagement is at the bottom. 
For me, that is the reason why we do open science. So I'm very much with the previous speakers. This is what we do. We have to do public engagement that will give a better research agenda, that, get, that we will solve the real problems for the real world and not do academic game playing. And so this is, should be at the top, but anyhow, um, this is a very inclusive approach. So you see here rewards and incentives. So we have to change the system, how we reward uh, scientists, researchers. We have to go and look at next generation metrics, other indicators, I will discuss that. We have to, to share the data. We have to put them in an open science cloud. We have to take care of research integrity. And we have also have to train people with respect to skills and education in what is science all about? How do we do open science? Why do we do open science? like the, the stuff that has been discussed in my book. So this is the complete agenda. And uh, I think Europeans can be proud that this is coming from Europe very much. In Utrecht, we follow very much this agenda. Uh, and, and in 2017, uh, we drafted an agenda. I was not involved. It was uh, happening with the previous rector. And, uh, and we made an infographic, uh, and this is uh, everywhere to be found on the internet by, by now, where we said what we want to do is we we see that science and society are, are much too much separated. And we want to go to a system where science is really working for a better world. And where science is really part of society, where science is being done in the context of society. And therefore, you, you need to, to get this public engagement. You need open access. You need fair data and software. And you need recognition and rewards. And we need all these four aspects of science at the same time to really be able to move to this say, science for a better world, what was described also in the examples before the break. Therefore, uh, this is a, co a comprehensive approach. This is not easy because changing, uh, uh, do, doing open science and, and, and fair data uh, and public engagement in, in yeah. instance can be done. But if you are not rewarded, if people are not rewarded to make their data open access, then people will not do it. And so this is the reason why we have been discussing open access for say 20 years, and now all of a sudden, all of a sudden now when we do in an integrated fashion, do open science, now it starts it, it starts to work because people are also rewarded and incentivized to publish their data in an open session. You, this is, um, the, I will make the PowerPoint pre presentation available to you so you can go to the details. In Utrecht, we started, uh, and I was uh, the chair of that since 2019, we started with, uh, with, uh, with the themes on open access, fair data, public engagement, here you see us on the bikes, and recognition and rewards. And it was a comprehensive approach. Here you see our rector signing the DORA declaration, which of, of course the Dutch Federation of Universities had signed, but we also wanted to sign it as Utrecht University to make it very clear. Here you see um, where I am here. And th this is definitely a, a huge program now. So there are roughly 200 people now working on this in our university, which makes us really proud. And this is a huge uh, say effort. And, and uh, we have also now, uh, established the, uh, the, 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 these, these faculty open science teams. You see them here depicted in every faculty. There's a group of people working uh, with the Dean uh, on open access, fair data, uh, recognition and rewards and public engagement. But there's also an open science uh, so community, uh, uh, very active. This is uh, grassroots, grassroots uh, say, uh, activity. Uh, and, and these are working in every faculty. So the Dean is responsible that this integrated approach of open science is now happening in his or her, uh, say, faculty. And this helps a lot because this is not only doing, we, do it, we don't do it from the rector's, say, offices, but this is really happening on the ground. Is this easy? No, this is not easy. This is hard work because open science is, for many people, something different, something new, something extra. And you have to discuss a lot. So you hear already how I talk about it. But this is the way to go. Why is it so difficult? And now I come to the, say, the, a little bit of theoretical, say, uh, introduction. Why is it so difficult? Here I show you uh, the, the business model of science. And the business model of science, uh, as I started, was I, I was hired by somebody who had produced wonderful articles in the United States. He got a performance assessment. He got recognition. He got money from funders, uh, the, the Cancer Foundation, which was my funder, Cancer Foundation, basic science foundations. He hired staff and equipment. I was one of them. I was a young PhD in 1980, and we produced data in his lab. And uh, we produced data. Data, of course, were converted into articles, as we all know, in, in biomedicine. Uh, this, my, my boss was the last author, and we were first author as young PhDs. And we got our own performance assessment. We got our own recognition. We got our own money. I had my own lab and staff and equipment. And 
in my lab, people produce data. I knew how to play, uh, say, the game and produce articles and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the way you can say, uh, this is how science is all about. This is how you make it to the next round. Because if you have articles, you can get, you can get funding from based on articles by, by, by funders. And this is the way uh, people play the game. And of course, uh, this is of course uh, very much about professional interest. Elites articles are not articles, but there are specific articles that have more power and have more, say, esteem. Uh, there's stratification. So if you want to enter the system, you have to have specific articles, then you can become a PI, et cetera, et cetera. So, and of course, this is about power uh, because who, who determines recognition, who determines to, who gets the money. There's, of course, also a power structure involved here. And of course, it's also about economics. My laboratory, in, 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 in the, when I was in the, in the high heydays of my uh, career, uh, that took uh, roughly 4 million uh, euros per year to get it going. And I needed money every year to, to renew. So this was the game we were all playing. And this is coming from a book that uh, has been published by Latour and Bulgar a very long time ago. You can see 86 already describing the SOC Institute in, um, in uh, San Diego. And for those who are interested, this is also in, of course, one of the power, one of the main structures in my book. Because if you understand this system, you understand where the problems are. And where are these problems? Well, the problem is we have a specific way to, to evaluate articles, output. And this has, of course, uh, we know this, of course, this is Journal Impact Factor H Index. Uh, amount of funding, it's very quantitative. Um, most papers are still behind paywalls because we are uh, not incentivizing, we didn't incentivize open access of sharing. Uh, and of course, so we were producing wonderful articles about HIV AIDS in Amsterdam, but in Africa, where most of the patients live, nobody could read them because they couldn't afford to pay the Elsevier subscriptions or they couldn't, uh, and, and we didn't make it open access. And of course, this is all about individuals. You heard me talk about first order, last order. Uh, it's all about very, very, uh, say, individuals. So this is a hyper competition for individuals to make a career in science. This is also a career advancement system. And if you play this game, you can also become professor eventually, uh, like I did, and even become the dean, uh, like I did. Uh, and of course, there's very little room for team science. So if you collaborate with people, then of course, yeah, you're diluting your output and your your, uh, your, 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 your CV, more or less. Of course, this is totally nonsense, but this is how the system is, I say, is, is shaping also the careers of, of, of individuals who really, really want to co collaborate, but find it difficult. And of course, uh, team science is not there, but also multidisciplinarity. So for instance, if you are an immunologist like me and you start to collaborate with virologists, what about, is Frank Miedema an immunologist or is, is he a virologist? So, uh, and then of course that can be very problematic for getting your funding because virologists don't give funding to immunologists, of course. And, uh, and this is, of course, diversity. Is, are we taking into account that there is, oh, why, wait, are we taking into account that there is society and that there is society that doesn't want articles, but wants, wants to have real significant knowledge to solve their problems? Like in the previous speakers before the, the break, there, is, there are stakeholders who want real uh, data, not only articles, they want data that they can use to solve their problems. And you can see in this credit cycle, society is largely absent. So there's, there's uh, for a long time, people did not say, take into account what stakeholders out of society, uh, outside of, of the acad academy, uh, academy uh, were thinking. For instance, I, I, I graduated uh, my PhD on, a, uh, on tissue leukemias, that was cancer in, uh, in, in white blood cells. And um, this was not taking into account what, what we did for patients. It was strictly an academic, say, exercise. And uh, of course, later I re realized talking with homosexual men with whom we collaborated on HIV AIDS, that all of a sudden I realized these people have problems and we should also take those problems into account. This was not happening during my PhD in the early days. Of course, this is now more in going in this direction. And the other thing which is very important, and this is on the next slide, it's all about novelty and quantity. So you have to, anytime you have to show, uh, say uh, uh, something new, uh, but it's not about quality, replication, relevance, or societal impact. So it's very much an internal system. And of course, in this circle, this is a four-year scheme. So if you if you have a grant, and you know, this is also the same in Finland, if you have a grant, after four years, you have to have a couple of articles to show that you can do science. And then you can try to get recognition and get your next grants and say, uh, play the game again. But if you have a if you took on a real problem, a real more complex problem, a real life nonlinear, um, messy problem, 
then the time that, that could be that in four years you are not able to have say several uh, say papers already and then uh, the next committee will say mm, this Frank Miedema guy he got the money but he didn't he has no nothing to show he doesn't have papers uh, after four years so um, uh, is he worth our funding yes or no probably not and so what happens people become short terminism terminisms and risk aversions so people are uh, are trying to take pr pr problems that can be solved in four years Many times, the, the, these are very reduced, very little problems that can be solved academically, but for the real world, have very in, little impact. And this is, of course, uh, how people are forced into the system. And the other thing which is very important for people, especially from other fields, is uh, uh, there are fields with extremely high societal impact. For instance, in, in medicine, re, uh, rehabilitation sciences, the rehabilitation, for instance, for patients after a stroke, uh, but that has very low, uh, low, low esteem. That that type of research is, has, is extremely important for patients and their families, but is not giving you a Nature Science or Cell paper, and so uh, it has very low esteem. But so it means that that is that are, that is there are fields with high societal impact, but score very poorly in the metrics that we use. And this is is, is also say the same the same for applied versus basic. Basic score is high. Applied, mm, yeah, yeah, interesting but never gets into a top journal. And of course, also social science and humanities, of course, are losing out to STEM. I am a chemist on background, so I, I was always doing good. But if, in, the, in the metric system that was used across academia uh, and still is being used across academia, which is of course not good, then social, social sciences can lose, always lose from the, 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 biome the biomedicine, the natural sciences, and, uh, and of course, uh, mathematics and technology. So in the end, of course, is, which is very important, also uh, it was mentioned in the, before the break, this, 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 the, the metrics we use, I just showed in the slide, is, is, a, is, is not, say, uh, uh, helpful in getting a national or institutional research agenda together, because we are, we are, we are driven by this, say, uh, this type of, of, uh, of impact that gives us a career, but most of the times it doesn't help us getting a, the, the, a national or institutional research agenda together where that, that is really reflecting societal and clinical needs. For instance, in medicine, many diseases, many problems are not being, uh, say, uh, investigated as it, should, as, as, it, as it should be done because it has low impact in the metrics. And this is well known, has been published in medical journals over and over again, but the system, the system where we are in, is this is really a very forceful system. This is really... Uh, say disciplining scientists and, and this and this and this makes uh, say uh, if you know that this is happening and that people are 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 are, are evaluating your research you're going to 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 live by it you're going to uh, to adapt to the system although many people are frustrated about it so this is in the, in open science evaluations there is now a lot going on people are trying to change the incentive and reward system based on all these discussions that I just had. It is now forbidden to use these, these uh, say, absolute indexes uh, and general impact factors, number of publications, because it's not rela related to quality. This is just the game, playing the game of academia. So, and this is, of course, also what Dora has been uh, advocating. You are uh, probably aware of that. And this Dora already started in 2012. And of course, what I already had on my slide, you have to engage with non-academic stakeholders, show where your problem comes from and what type of problem you want to solve. Or are you only, say, uh, chasing academic hobbies? And of course, diversity and inclusiveness. Like what was shown in the previous talk very, very nicely is if you want to understand and want to, say, study your problems in society, you have to uh, go to the context. And therefore, you need, in the context of, of society, there's diversity and inclusiveness. And it also should be re reflected in academia. So our staff should also reflect diversity and inclusiveness, which is, of course, also a reflection of what happens in society. I've been doing my uh, research in, in Ethiopia in, on HIV AIDS and uh, understanding the, the local system, the local culture, the local say, politics of Ethiopia was necessary for us to understand how we did, how we should do research on HIV AIDS in Ethiopia. Totally different from what happened in Amsterdam with gay people with HIV, with HIV infection, you can imagine, totally different. So we, we needed to, 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 to really engage. And of course, peer review narratives. So uh, explain your research, write out your, your uh, story about your research and, and, and discuss with peers. That's what we did in the early days. 
But now, of course, everybody is just now looking at GIF, hit age indexes and number of publications instead of reading. So we are now doing more counting than reading. And of course, open science practices and efforts effort should be rewarded. In 2016, and I'm still a little bit proud of that, we changed this in my UMC Utrecht, my medical center, which is a, a, a huge medical center where at, the, at, the, at that time already about, uh, say, 1,300 PhDs were working on their thesis. So it, it was a, it's a factory. And so we changed the system and we went to, to an inclusive set of generic indicators. And it is in use since 2016. Uh, was it easy to go to this, say, a new scheme? And you can see it's very, say, uh, broad, it's inclusive. And uh, one of the major issues is we did also take, we didn't only look at outcomes, but we also look at process. So how do you do your research? How do you get your priorities? How do you get your, your questions? Did you, did you talk to patients? Did you talk to patients and their parents? Or, or did you talk to kids uh, who, who are there with their elderly, say, uh, parents, etc.? cetera? And, and so are you aware of, of next steps? How will your, your knowledge be implemented and, and evaluated? And, and how do you do your design? This is, of course, open access and fair data again here. And so this was new for many people to, to, to ask these questions. And we know that this is extremely important. But the previous speaker said, if you are already, say, engaged with, with the people who have these, these questions, then the, the, the chance that your research will be used is very, very high. And, and this is now in use. And this is not saying now there's, there's a lot going on. This is also what we use now in, uh, in, Ut in the whole University of Utrecht. And I'm already, uh, and I'm chairing the program, but there are many people involved, where we go to a, a more, more inclusive model, which is team, research, impact, professional performance, for instance, clinical performance, could be also other performances, leadership, academic leadership and education. Are you also teaching? This is now the whole spectrum. So you're not focusing on your outcome in research and then looking at general impact factors and, and specific types. No, this is very inclusive. And what I already described in the previous slide, research can, be, can have very, very different outcomes. It can have the outcomes as the previous speaker showed before the break, it can be a paper, it can be a patent, it can be a method to, to, to learn to speak again uh, in, during rehabilitation. It can be everything. And that's all academic excellence. And this is, of course, an, an argument that ac uh, ac uh, academics have very different ac uh, excellences across the, the ac academy and that we have to, so to, to incentivize and reward them. And we can here see it in, also in an, in an infographic. We were just measuring, mostly measuring research. And we're now measuring teams. This is an individual. And now we, uh, we are measuring more or less teams, contributions of individuals to teams that can be done. Uh, and of course, also evaluating how those teams and how these individuals uh, are involved in education, research, impact, leadership, how they also shape university and how they are aware of what happens in society. And this is a uh, more complex, more dynamic, you could say. Uh, people can also change in these roles. But this is what people, uh, in the end, of course, uh, find very gratifying. This is really uh, appreciating what, what academics do nowadays in the 21st century. Not only papers, producing papers, but engaging. And you see again here how we are engaging this in this, uh, how this is part of the, uh, the whole aspect of making the move to open science. Um, so in the end, I'm nearly done. So in the end, you can see this is what we are now uh, aiming for. So we want to, uh, at the top, engagement of societal stakeholders in problem choice, in research, in evaluation. So this co-creation, co this is what we want. This is not only in biomedical sciences. This is everywhere in academia can be done and has an enormous added value. And I already argued for that. So in this, say, credit cycle, we now bring in other uh, inclusive indicators. We look at real quality, not, say, uh, proxies for quality, which are uh, flawed. We look at societal impact and, and, and public uh, uh, performance. We look at and, and public engagement. And we look at academic leadership. So, so how are you organizing your group? Are you teaching? Are you, are you building the, the, the future for your, your PhDs? And of course, uh, uh, equality, diversity, and inclusion is very, very high on the agenda. And of course, we want to have open peer review and, and, and also even pub post, pub, post pub, pub peer review, like open, open uh, comments on papers after, pub, being, have, after publication. Very, very important. And of course, open uh, access publishing and fair data, all uh, aspects of the, the new practice of science. And of course, you can ask the question, uh, are we now, uh, say, far behind? No, this is happening 
in the whole of the Netherlands, all, all universities are now have say signed up to this and are going for room for everybody's talent. You can check that website at the bottom here of, of my slide. And this is now, is it easy? No, it's very difficult. There's a lot of discussion. Uh, some people really disagree. They think that science and nature and cell are the top science and the rest is all say, okay. Uh, but uh, this is of course what you can expect if this, because this is really at the heart of how we distribute monies, how we uh, say uh, distribute say professorships, uh, reputation, etc. So this is really the heart of the matter in, in academia. And of course, also our funders are on board. This is the main national funder. And they all have, they ask for narratives. They don't want publication lists. They want only five. They want narratives. They want uh, explanation, et cetera, et cetera. So, and in the end, we have a new national strategic evaluation protocol. I was involved in that in a very interesting committee. And, uh, and this is very much based on strategy. So the first question is, what do you want to do with your science? Like in the previous talk before the break, these people, these researchers had an idea. They wanted to do something in the real world uh, and, uh, and you need academic research for that. So vision, strategy, and aims of the research are extremely important and that should be outlined, explicitly outlined. Not your, 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 your goal is not producing articles. No, why? What type of knowledge? What, what are, why, where are these articles for? Who is going to use your data? And they could also be done in narratives and you may support it by data. And of course, you can also in, in, indicate what type of indicators you want to be judged by. So for, and, and you have to, get, you have to, we have to get um, real and say, science has many forms. There's pluriformity in science is immense. And therefore you need also indicators that can really say, uh, be fair to this uh, say uh, pluriformity. And of course, eventually, of course, also uh, it's about quality and impact, but it's also about how do you do your science? Is it open science? Is it, how do you, train your PhDs, how, what, how, how are you organizing your academic culture? And for every, say, science department, center, unit, you can ask these questions. And of course, how are you doing your, your diversity and talent management? And this is now the protocol that is used in Holland for, for one year, nearly one year, to evaluate, uh, say, uh, every three or six years, six years, um, uh, the research in, in the whole of the country. And the Royal Academy, the funders, and all the universities have signed up to this protocol. And I can tell you, they find it difficult. This is more difficult than just counting articles and looking at where your papers are published. This is really discussing, uh, understanding, reading. Uh, and of course, this adds a lot to quality of science in, 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 in the broad sense. Are we alone in, in Europe? Are we alone in Holland? Are you alone in, 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 uh, in Finland? Absolutely not. On this slide, you can see there's a lot going on uh, very importantly, of course, in Europe, but also UNESCO, the United Nations, they are totally devoted to open science because UNESCO says we don't need papers, we need significant knowledge that is, say, geared to solving problems in the real world everywhere. And, and the real world is very, uh, say, diverse, so we need diversity, etc. And of course, uh, also ideas, Light and Manifesto, ideas about how you can then uh, use other indicators to evaluate quality because that's something, of course, we need to do all of the time in university. So uh, again, uh, I thank you very much for uh, this uh, invitation. You see that I'm totally in it and I, I can also see that uh, Finland has been there for a long time already for open science and has been doing a wonderful job. And I congratulate you with a, with a wonderful session. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry that I have to leave after my talk for because I'm busy. But uh, this is a, a wonderful occasion for me to show the data. The, the, the PowerPoint will be uh, uh, available. The book is open science. Uh, enjoy, I will also, in my book, I, I also describe say personal problems, um, uh, resistance to, to the change. And, and, and so it's also a little bit gossipy here and there to, to make it for real for people in academia, because this is a problem that has been there for a long time. And we are now very close to, a major change to open science. I thank you very much.